Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us in our next in the series of webinars that GAP is hosting. My name is Jason Funderberg. Uh, I'm going to be moderating and asking questions uh, that you guys have to <clears throat> Mario Mackey, Director of Member Services, who will be giving us our presentation. Uh, just a reminder, we are answering questions today, so feel free to send them along. Um, Steve Latos and John Manos are also here. They're going to help answer some questions that we can't get to um, in the talking portion. So now I'm going to kick it over to Mario Mackey for posting scores in the new handicapping world. Mario, thanks so much for taking time out of your day to uh, to present to us. Great. Thank you, Jason. Good morning to everybody. Uh, like Jason said, we're excited to continue our webinar series that we started with the introduction to course rating on Wednesday. And uh, we've got... Uh, Four more on handicapping and starting today with posting scores in the new world. So let's get right to it. As Jason said, after each section, we'll take a short uh, pause to answer any questions. So please feel free to use that question tab and submit those. So first, why is score posting important? It seems like a basic question, but we always want to review it. So especially in the new world handicap system, um, there are changes that we want to go over today and then we'll show you how the best ways to post those scores are. So in the world handicap system, the golfer's responsibility is to attempt to make the best scores possible at each hole and submit that score for handicap purposes as soon as possible after the round is completed. Why that's important, we'll talk about momentarily. So there are daily revisions. Instead of the first and the 15th of each month, like in the old USGA handicap system, handicaps are revised on a daily basis, provided you posted a score the previous day. And because of there are daily revisions now, that means the golfer needs to post that round prior to the end of that day, prior to midnight local time. There's also something new called the playing conditions calculation adjustment. This is an adjustment based on course or weather conditions when scores are out of a expected range for that day that occurs that adjusts the golfer's score differential for that day and affects all golfers at a club. Uh, we're running a specific webinar on that on Monday with Steve, so I'd encourage you to tune into that. But that's another reason why it is important to post your score that day that you play. So let's talk about daily revisions for a second. Under the rules of handicapping, a handicap index will update daily. As I said, players should submit their scores as soon as possible after the round is completed and before midnight. So now this is what a player's score uh, handicap index history would look like in the world handicap system. You can see this golfer started on uh, 129 with an index of 2.3. You can see that there were revisions, uh, four more revisions after that, meaning they posted scores that many times. So in this case, they posted a round on January 30th, and then they had a handicap revision issued on the 31st of 3.0. A few days later, they played again on February the 2nd. Posted another round, it did not actually change the handicap index because we're still only looking at a certain number of the scores in the golfer's uh, handicap index. Uh, we're looking at eight of the lowest 20 score differentials. So in this case, the golfer posted a score on the 2nd of February. It was not one of the lowest eight, so it did not change the index. On February 11th, he, he posted again. That index actually went up to a 3.4 and then posted on February 14th again, and that went down to a 3.3. So you can see there the variance of a, a full stroke there between 129 and 215. Um, it's a similar period to what we would have had before, but you can see um, not just waiting for the 1st and 15th of the month, there's actual variance on each one of those postings. So that's an example of what a, <clears throat> a player's handicap history would look like. Now on this next slide, I wanna show you what the daily revisions look like for somebody who posts a lot and why this is a huge difference and an important difference in the new system. So on the right, you can see with bi-monthly revisions, this is real examples from one of our golfers. We have, a, we have some golfers in Gap who post quite a bit, who play in the hundreds of rounds throughout the year and post those rounds. And this is a real life example from 2019 for one of those golfers. And in this case, you can see on June 1st of last year, he had a handicap index of 12.5. And on June 15th of last year, he had a handicap index of 9.3. So knowing that, we know that if you played this individual on June 13th to 14th of last year, it was gonna be tough to beat him because he was trending very well. He was trending probably around three strokes lower than that handicap index that he was playing as based on what he went to on the 15th. Now, if we look at it, how that would have worked this year, which is the column on the left there, you can see all those rounds he posted, and you can see how the daily handicap changes things. And imagine if you were playing a match against that golfer, like I said, on, on June 14th last year, uh, if you were playing it under last year's rules, that golfer would have been a 12.5 index and gotten his course handicap from that index accordingly. 
Now, under the new rules of handicapping in the World Handicap System, that golfer would be a 9.4 because we're taking into account all those rounds he's played in that two-week period prior to that June 14th round, and he'd be a 9.4, and obviously a significant, significant difference there. So again, this works because the golfer is posting scores every day prior to midnight local time, posting the best score possible on each hole, and that's the, the key point there to take away for daily revisions. So we wanted to sum up quickly how daily revisions work and why they are important. So before we move on to the next topic, uh, Jason, do we have any questions submitted on uh, daily revisions? Yeah, just one so far. Um, I read somewhere that scores can only be posted if you have a witness. I often play alone. What are my options? So that's a great question, and that's something that ties directly into the World Handicap System. Uh, the World Handicap System, a, a brief primer for those of you who aren't aware, was the genesis of it was taking six governing bodies around the world, USGA being our local one here, obviously, and combining their handicap systems into one world system that went into effect January 1st of this year. Um, and as part of that, there were concessions from each system. Uh, for example, the USGA course rating and handicap system, the course rating system is used basically everywhere in the world now. And so we didn't have a lot of major changes there. But uh, playing rounds by yourself and posting those rounds was a concession the USGA made through this process. Actually, about four years ago, the rules in the old USGA handicap system were changed so that you had to play around for handicap purposes to be posted. It had to be played with another individual. So uh, that was changed as kind of the first concession to this world handicap system. And um, in that case, that's something that uh, it still remains in place in the World Handicap System. You do need to play with someone else to be able to post that round. All right, I uh, got a couple more coming in here. <clears throat> uh, so someone said, it sounds like a club needs a handicap committee to assure that players uh, like that post his or her, her scores. Yeah, the handicap committee is uh, a requirement in the in the handicap system. Um, that's, uh, there's always been a requirement for a handicap committee. Uh, we all know some clubs are, are more active than others, but a club does need to have a committee and it does need to have a member as a, as a chair of that committee. It cannot be a golf professional's chair. A golf professional can serve on that committee in an advisory non-voting role, right. but there is a requirement for each club to have a handicap committee to help administer and police that system at the local level. And one last one here uh, before we move on. Could the witness be a caddy? So that's a good question, and that's actually a, a relatively uh, gray area in the rules. There's, uh, I've had that question asked. I've actually asked it before to the USGA system, to the USGA individuals, and there's not a uh, definitive uh, declaration in the rules of handicapping or anywhere in the USGA system that says that it can or cannot be. Um, I would advise to play with someone else and have that person attest that, but uh, there's not a definitive yes or no written anywhere as far as I know. All right, let's move on. So let's talk about the acceptability of scores. There's a slight change here in the World Handicap System that I wanted to review for everybody. So this is, uh, if you did not finish your round of golf, how do you post that round? Is it acceptable for handicap purposes? So here's the look at the different scenarios and what you could do for posting guidelines here. If you posted, uh, if you only played up to six holes of golf, then you cannot post that score. There's no way to post that one if you only played one, two, three, four, five, or six holes. Now, if you played seven or eight holes, you would post a nine hole score using a, a term called net par for any unplayed holes. Net par equals par plus any handicap strokes you would have received. So if it's a par four on the ninth hole and you didn't play that hole and you were getting one stroke on that hole with the handicap system, then you would post a five for that hole. Um, if you played nine through 13 holes, you would actually just post the nine hole score using the actual scores for all holes on that completed side. If you play 14 through 17 holes, similar to the uh, nine hole option, you would post an 18 hole score using again, that net par, par plus any handicap strokes for unplayed holes. And then if you play 18 holes, obviously you post an 18 hole score. Wanted to bring this up because this is a slight change from the old USGA system in the new WHS. Previously, you only needed 13 holes to post a round using that par plus any handicap strokes. Now you need 14 holes. It's a little simpler to remember, you need seven holes to be able to post a nine hole score. 14 holes to be able to post an 18 hole score. We've also gotten some questions and wanted to bring up something that's uh, important in this current uh, pandemic and with our COVID-19 guidelines and restrictions from the CDC. So obviously in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, golf courses are closed right now on the borders of the governor in both states. 
but Delaware, there are some golf courses open, or obviously you could be playing in another course that has golf courses open right now. And a lot of golf courses are doing things like raising the hole ladder above the putting surface or placing objects in the hole so the ball can be more easily removed. How can we handle those modifications of the hole with regard to acceptability of score postings? The USGA, in conjunction with the other uh, groups in the World Handicap System, put out a temporary measure about 10 days ago within the United States to accept scores played under these conditions for handicap purposes using the most likely score guidelines, even though the player has not holed out. These regulations will stay in place until otherwise advised by the USGA. So uh, most likely score, there's guidelines that uh, basically you're, you're, if you're within five feet of the hole, you're estimating a stroke from there. You're estimating what you would have done the remainder of that hole based on those guidelines. So there are uh, recommendations in place. You can still post that score. It is still acceptable for score posting in that case. Next thing to talk about is the maximum score for handicap purposes. So in the old USGA handicap system, there was something called equitable stroke control, ESC. And that meant depending on what your course handicap was when you went out to play, there was a specific uh, maximum uh, score you could post on a hole for handicap purposes. That's been replaced in the world handicap system by the term net double bogey. Uh, similar to what we talked about earlier with net par, net double bogey is double bogey plus any handicap strokes you were to receive on that hole. That is the maximum a golfer can post for handicap purposes on a hole. So here's that formula. Again, it's net double bogey. It's par plus the two strokes for double bogey plus or minus any handicap strokes received or given on a hole. So let's look at a real life example here. We have Dave Bennett has a course handicap of 27 at Great Bay Country Club from the White Tees. And on the par five six hole with a stroke index of five, he struggles and makes the 12. So Dave has a bad hole there, but what's the maximum he can take for handicap purposes? Well, let's, let's break down that formula again. So for Dave, it's a par five, as we said. It is a double bogey plus he's getting two strokes there because it's the five index hole. He's a 27 handicap. So in this case, his maximum score he can take on that hole is nine. So despite making a 12, the maximum he can take on that hole is nine. And one of the nice things about the new gin products that we'll go over here in a little bit is that there are built in hole by hole score posting options that actually do that math for you. So before we move on and look at our next topic, any questions about those guidelines or, or net double bogey, anything anybody's got for us, Jason? Sorry about that, I forgot to unmute myself. Got two here for you. Um, will GAP use a standard time period prior to the start of a handicap competition for establishing handicaps for the competition? If so, what is it? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, we are going to do that and we recommend, uh, there are recommendations in manual at the club level to, to try and come up with methods like that too. For GAP, we're using seven days prior to the start of a competition. So and to explain that question a little further, if, if anybody didn't understand that, if we have a, a net competition taking place that we need to run the handicap report for that takes place on a Monday, we're going to use the handicap from the previous Monday for all golfers. And that just is a, a reason we're doing it for administrative purposes. It's easy for everybody to remember. It's one week prior. It gives us time to print out our scorecard, print out all of our, all of our reports, our scoreboards, everything we need. And we are using one week prior. At the club level, uh, it, you know, you obviously want to know and, and let the golfers know which handicap uh, you're going to have to use for those. And we know for if it's a weekly ladies day or men's day event, a lot of clubs are going to print the report that morning and, and print the scorecards off that. And that's fine. But we also know that if you're having a, your big club invitational that you might print out a booklet for or have additional resources required, then maybe you're going to do that in a week out or five days out, whatever it might be. It's all fine. You just need to, to pick a date and, and go with it. All right, this, this question kind of follows up on that. Um, under the old system, the golf professional only had to print out his or her membership's handicaps twice a month. Any suggestions for having current handicaps available for daily slash weekly matches to avoid printing daily or having to look up many handicaps daily? So we're gonna talk about that a little bit when I go into the technology and show you some images and, and video of the gen technologies. Uh, obviously, it's not it's not feasible and reasonable to print out that handicap report and post it on the wall on a daily basis. Uh, it's just not something that we think will be done. So there is a reliance on technology now. Um, there are some some good ways to do that, and we're also working with the gin team to try and get some better reporting done for clubs. Uh, we can okay. automate reports for golf professionals to come in on a daily basis, so they can have those at at their fingertips on their phone or on their computer. But uh, we know it's not feasible to print that report out every day, and we're working to, to try and find the best solutions. But there are uh, 
ways within the gym products to check that on a daily basis as well. Mm -hmm. And I got one more uh, for this question section. Uh, what does one enter as a score if I don't follow the rules of golf when I play, i.e. play two balls, just pick up on one, on a hole, et cetera? And that score would not be acceptable for posting. So you just wouldn't post it. Gotcha. Awesome. All right, so let's talk about the Gen technologies. We're going to take you through all the options. There is the Gen mobile app, there is Gen.com, there's the GAF website, and then there's the club score posting kiosk at your at your facility. They've all changed just a little bit, and we want to take you through all of them and show you what the positives are and, and get you familiar with using them. So uh, let's talk about the mobile app first. With the mobile app, uh, we're no longer using the GAP mobile app uh, that we had last year. We're now using the Gen mobile app. It connects directly with the World Handicap System and the Gen system. And uh, so if you have not downloaded that, we'd encourage you to do so. It works for iOS, iPhones, or Android. And you can just search the App Store or Google Play Store for Gin and download that. And once you download it, you can log in with your Gin number and last name. That's all you need. So you just need to know your number and last name to get in there. Some of the key features I've noted here, uh, you have the handicap lookup for you and your playing partners. Obviously, the, the ability to post your score directly there. Uh, we'll have links to GAP event results uh, once we get back out on the golf course. There's also links to the club directory or the team matches, there's things like that that are right there within the app, similar to what we had in the old GAP app. So let's take a look. We've got a little bit of video here for you on the next two slides. The first one is going to take you through the partner handicap functionality in the Gin app. So this is the case. This is kind of the home screen of that Gin app. It's just been logged in as Steve Latos here. And Steve's going to go, he's got five golfers saved as his kind of partner friends on there. When you have someone saved as one of your partners, you can look them up. You can see some of their score history on there as well. Uh, but then you can also search for anybody else and add them. So in this case, uh, Steve types in my name, Mackie, and finds me on the list, picks me out, puts that star next to my name. That means I'm saved as one of the golfers he's following within the app. And then now if you go to golfer lookup and you select a golf course, you type in, in this case, Doylestown. We type in Doylestown, it shows you all those partners. We can select a tee set, assuming we're going on the first tee at Doylestown in this case. We set the green tee. You can see the course handicap calculated for all the golfers right there. Um, and in the case that one golfer might be playing a different tee set, you can adjust that as well. So in this case, this person is not playing the green, he's playing the combo. You can see Clayton there, we adjusted that, or the black tee, whatever we want to do. For Sam, it, it, it's smart enough to know based on that golfer's handicap index, what their course handicap is and then show you there. So that's a great way and a great example of how this technology works. Uh, if you have that app on your phone, you're in the parking lot, get ready to go tee off, or if your facility allows the, the use of a, a phone, a mobile device on the course, then you can check that before the first tee. You got your group of buddies in there that you play with all the time. You got them saved. You go out there that morning, you select your tee set, you figure out your course handicaps, it's got it right there for you. So that's a great way to rely on that gen technology to do that for you. Now let's look at it from a score posting standpoint and what that does and how that looks within that same app. Same thing here, uh, you have three choices, hole by hole, hole by hole stats or total score. Uh, one thing I wanna show you here is just how that the system is smart enough to work for that net double bogey thing like we talked about earlier. So you, you can select from your recent courses or you can type in one to pick again. In this case, again, we'll pick Doylestown. We go post it, you can select either nine or 18 holes. You next select your tee set. Uh, we should have every course that has a valid course rating will be listed in there. We pick the front nine. It knows it's an away score because it knows what club the golfer is from on the gin system. You change the score to reflect the date being played. It right away, it tells you your course handicap. So now you go to the hole by hole scoring module. And one thing that's nice here, as you can see, is if you type in a 15, if you had a bad first hole, it will automatically adjust that net double bogey. You can see there that adjusted score line at the bottom goes to eight or five or whatever it might be. So the system is smart enough to know that net double bogey for you. So you don't have to calculate that for yourself if you're using hole by hole. At the end, it gives you a little stats page, which shows you your average scores on the par threes, par fours, par fives. It shows you your differentials, and then it would go into your score history. Um, that's also something as you post, if you're if you do have your phone on the golf course, you can post one hole at a time and save that round as you go through. So just another nice benefit, something that was not available before on any of the gen technologies in a, in a handheld form would be hole by hole posting. Um, and there is stats available too, which we'll talk about when we look at gen.com. 
So before we move on to the next method, Jason, any questions from anyone about the Gin Mobile app and its usage? Uh, none so far. Uh, looks like you got through that one uh, pretty clearly. Uh, didn't have any questions. Made it through unscathed. That's good. So let's go on and uh, talk about Gin.com. Very similar uh, usage here to Gin.com in terms of the features available. Uh, again, you log in with your Gin number and last name. You can obviously uh, save that in your browser as well. And once you log in, you'll see it welcomes you. It shows the golfer's name. It shows your handicap index. It shows what associations you're a member of as well as what clubs. Uh, and then at the top, you see there's post score, golfer lookup, stats, handicap calculator, very similar features to what's available on the mobile app. But I want to take you through and show you some screenshots from the post score option here. So when you go to post a score, you have the option for a total score or a whole by whole score. You have the option to select a course from your recently played courses or to type in a course search. In that case, I typed in Philadelphia. It brings up a lot of them there. Uh, and then when you go through and if you post a total score, that's the image on the left. Again, it knows it's an away score for me. It knows I select nine or 18 holes. I pick a T set. And then you can see it, it only requires the total score. It allows you to put front nine and back nine breakdowns if you'd like, but they're not required. They don't have the red asterisk next to them. Um, and then a hole by hole score, it's similar to that look we saw in the app. Uh, you can toggle advanced stats on or off. We'll show you that in just a second. But then you just type in your score and it will adjust that score based on that double bogey because again, it knows who you are, what your handicap index is, what T set you're playing, and thus what your course handicap is. So here's a look at the hole by hole score with advanced stats. The advanced stats you can select there are number of putts, whether you hit a green in regulation, and your driving accuracy, where you can indicate if you missed it left or you missed it right. Uh, this is a pretty cool thing, something new to the system again that I think we're going to get uh, a lot of golfers using this year. And you can do it within that app or within the gin.com um, module, like I said. And uh, you can see the example on the right of what it produces. Similar to what we saw in the mobile app, it would show uh, the score. And you can see at the top, it's got the date, the slope, and the rating. If there was any PCC applied, it's got the differential, what course you played. And then there's the stats of par threes, par fours, par fives, what your uh, driving accuracy was in this case. This uh, golfer missed left quite a bit over three quarters of the time. Um, and then your greens and regulation you hit. So uh, just a cool way to, to track those advanced stats throughout the year as you go through your rounds. That sums up Gin.com. Jason, any questions on Gin.com from anybody? Uh, not on Gin.com specifically, but uh, I got one here. Uh, what happens to scores not posted on the same day? So we're going to talk about that a little more. In um, the the key there is is really the playing conditions calculation that ties in a lot of what Steve's going to be talking out about in his Monday webinar. But the playing conditions calculation, like I said, is that adjustment to all scores posted that day if they uh, if scores are outside of an expected range, higher or lower. And if you didn't post that day, your score is not considered in the calculation of that PCC adjustment. You would get the adjustment if you posted three days later, but you wouldn't be considered in it, which is important because maybe there wouldn't have been an adjustment if you posted your score, or maybe the adjustment would have been more or less severe and uh, you didn't take part in it. So that's why it's important to have that PCC, uh, that score posted for PCC purposes. And again, Steve's going to really do a, a whole webinar on that on Monday, so we'd encourage you to tune into that. I've uh, got another one about Golf Genius here. Uh, if you or your club uses Golf Genius and do hole by hole scoring within that app and it posts your score from there, will those hole by hole statistics show up in Gin Mobile? Statistics in terms of the birdies and bogeys and all that? I, I believe so. Is what we're talking about? It's actually a, a good one. I have not tried that out. Um, that's something that. Uh, I'll have to do a test on because again, that's a we haven't had any golf genius scores posted yet, unfortunately, with uh, with what's going on here. But I'll take a look at that and uh, we'll do a test on that and uh, let you guys know. All right, perfect. Okay, let's look at GapGolf.org, the Gap website, and how score posting works there. This one is the most similar to how it was before, with just one change here that I want to review. Again, you go to your Gap Locker, uh, which is on the front right of the uh, homepage there. You log into your Gap Locker, you click the post scores link next to your club memberships, and then it brings you to the score posting page uh, where you post your score, you select the date, you set home or away, nine or 18 holes. Uh, you can select any Gap club there, and then the database does tie directly into the USGA course rating database there. So if again, if a score, uh, if a club has a, an updated rating, it will be updated on there now. 
Uh, that's a change from last year. It's automatically updated there, which is nice. And it uh, goes takes you right in there. So again, this is if you click on the link in your e-revision you get from GAP twice a month, or if you're on the GAP website looking at something else, um, you go to the locker where you can also obviously opt into any of our subscriptions, and then you click score posting to post your score that way. They're all going to the same database. It doesn't matter which method you use, they're going there. So I know that was a brief one, uh, and that was the most similar, but any quick questions about that, Jason? Uh, one here, uh, two here, actually. So if you put in total score, the golfer would have to adjust for net bogey holes to get the correct total? That's correct. If you're if you're not posting hole by hole, you're going to have to do that math to do the adjustment yourself. You're going to have to know what your net double bogey score is on each hole. All right. And uh, we are required to post our scores in hand in the scorecard. If we keep our score via the app in lieu of the card, there will be no will there will be no card to hand in. Uh, can you repeat that, Jason? Can you read that so, one more time? So uh, they're asking um, if they record their score via the app instead of the card, how are they to hand in their scorecard? Uh, so, you know, for, for an example, I don't know if this is in a competition environment or not that the example is given there, but for example, mm -hmm. in a gap event where we have uh, some events that you can use the app for scoring, we still have a scorecard requirement. You're signing your card and you're turning that in as well. Um, I, I know clubs, some clubs do it differently, but uh, the most part, you know, anything that's attested, you're gonna need an actual scorecard signed in that case, obviously. Um, right. If it's your club requires it for whatever event they have, I, I mean, that's a that's a club to club policy on how they would require um, that. But if it is something that needs to be attested, there does need to be a paper scorecard there. Right. Uh, i got a couple more here. Uh, is there any advice as to ensure players are posting the correct net double bogey rule? Uh, assuming they will not post the hole by hole, it appears that higher handicap players might not go through the routine of ensuring where they got strokes and where they didn't, therefore artificially inflating their posting score and handicap. Yep, and this is something that uh, we expect to deal with a lot this year. Um, one, I think that those same individuals a lot of times probably were not applying equitable stroke control correctly, so it's obviously still going to be an issue here. Um, yeah, it's something that that's why we try to do these education pieces because there's not a, a great and easy way for that golfer to calculate that other than knowing that they need to do that. Um, if they are using an event that has uh, that's handicapped with their strokes and they're dotting their card, I mean that's why we try to enforce that formula and show you that. But uh, no, if 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 they're uh, if they're not posting hole by hole, that is up to the player, and and we're just going to continue to try and educate the golfer on really what that requirement is and what's expected of them. Um, but like anything else, we know that it's not going to be perfect at first, and and we need to continue to work on it. All right, next one here. Got a couple more. Uh, I played golf in February. How do those scores get posted? Uh, so if it's February around in the, the gap region, it's not eligible for posting. Our posting season is April 1st to November 14th. So that one actually could not be posted. It wouldn't even be eligible. If, to even if played in Florida? If you, if you played in Florida, you can post it. And and all you would do in that case would be uh, when if you post in a way around in any of those gin products, when you search, you can search any course in the in the database. So if you typed in, uh, you know, Doral, it would bring up Doral down there and you could play if you were down in Miami and played around at Doral, you could post mm -hmm. that, you'd have the date correctly. Um, the gin system is smart enough to know that uh, if you try to post Philadelphia Country Club in February, it would say this is an inactive season. If you try to post Doral in February, it would let that go through. Gotcha. <clears throat> um, if your group is registered to play and you fail to post your score timely, will or should the pro shop notify you? So that's, a, that's really a handicap committee and a club decision on how you police the, the lack of posting. There are some controls within the manual on what can be done um, as far as reminders. It could, it could go all the way up to penalty scores of the lowest differential and the golfer's record could be posted. But, you know, what we encourage is just, uh, you know, a couple of notifications and warnings to, to let the golfer know we need you to post that around that day because it's it's got added importance. You know, last year when we were only updating on the 1st and 15th of every month, Yes, we were encouraged to post every day, but did it really matter if you posted on the 1st or the 12th? Not really, because they were still going to update on the 15th. Now it matters because you need to have an updated handicap for the next time you play and because we're taking that into account in the playing conditions calculation. So again, it's up to the club to determine how they police that within the controls given in the, in the manual. But uh, we would encourage, you know, maybe not be as heavy handed right away the first instance, but 
continue to to notify and educate the golfers as much as possible. Gotcha. Um, are we are there built in safeguards for double posting? Say club post score in Golf Genius, but I also posted in Gin Mobile. So it depends on. There are some, but it's not perfect. Um, is the best way I can say that. There are some safeguards in there, but uh, a lot of times, it, if, if for instance, if the uh, score type was was different, it might not always catch it. Uh, there, if there's a hole by hole versus total posting, it wouldn't always catch it. Um, I would not rely on that, and I would make sure that you are constantly looking at your scoring record to make sure that there are not any of those double postings. Because if there are, you need to reach out to your club or to us to obviously delete that and make sure your record is as accurate as possible. All right, uh, one other question here. Um, will this presentation be safe for future viewing? Yes, all of our GAP webinars are being recorded and will be posted at gapgolf.org slash gap dash webinar. Yep, and, and we, we got one more uh, little quick section to go over here, Jason, uh, that I'll talk about the score posting kiosk at the club and then uh, and we'll leave with that with a look at the other webinars too. So. Thank you for those questions. The last thing I want to talk about is the score posting kiosk at your club. This is the one that most of you are familiar with. It's it's sitting in the in the pro shop or in the men's grill or the ladies' locker room, wherever it might be at your club. Um, it's got a little bit different look this year, so I just want to show you a few screens of it. The initial screen, you use the last name, local number, or gin number to look up the golfer. If you if you click guest score posting, if you're a guest at the club, you just type in your gin number. In this case, I typed in Smith. Then at Apple Cross, Brian Smith comes up, shows this handicap index. You have the options similar to the other products to post a total score, a whole by whole score, my handicap information, which is your course handicap for that day, or the golfer lookup screen where you can look up other golfers. So if you click on post a, a total score or a whole by whole score, you get to the screen where you post the number of holes, the type of score, which tee set you played and what date. And then again, it shows your handicap and you go in there. And similar to the other look and feel, uh, like on the fourth hole, you, you post an eight, the maximum is a six. So. Again, uh, want to just prove uh, or show you that that uh, is automatically done if you're posting the whole by whole scores. Also, and we touched on this earlier, this is a look at the handicap range for this golfer, the course handicap range. Uh, as we said, it's no longer practical to utilize the printed reports since those handicaps are daily. You'd want to use the Gin app or the club kiosk. Those are the best ways to check that course handicap before play uh, because they're updated every morning and you know that uh, they're going to have the latest number for you and you can go right to the golfer information to see that. Um, again, Jason mentioned it just a second ago. We have a GAP webinars page. It's on the screen there, gapgolf.org slash gap dash webinars. It has the link to the presentation recordings. We'll have this one up later this afternoon. It also has future presentations. Uh, there is one on the playing conditions calculation on Monday that Steve is handling. Steve Latos, our manager of gin technical support. Steve's also going to do one on the stroke index allocation changes under WHS on Wednesday. And then I'm going to talk about the changes to the course handicaps on Friday. Uh, those are all set up. And we would encourage you to sign up if, you, if you're not already. Um, we're about to our time, but I think we've got time for a few more questions, Jason, if we have any more. Um, if there are additional questions, we do have the emails and questions from everybody, and we'll reach out afterwards to answer those questions as well if we don't get to them today. Mm -hmm. uh, just a couple more here, Mario. Um, can you post two scores if you play 36 holes in one day? You can. You can. And uh, that's one of the reasons why – And I, I, I could have mentioned that. I'm sorry about that. But uh, when we talk about the double posting, you know, you have to be careful on the double posting, what restrictions the system puts in place, because technically somebody could play twice in one day and post the exact same score both day, both rounds. Um, so you can do that. It will prompt you to say, you know, to make sure it's OK, but uh, you can do that. Gotcha. Um, I'll answer this one. What was the web address to listen to a webinar at a later date? Uh, that's actually on the screen right now. Um, you can find that on our main web page as well, gapgolf.org or gapgolf.org slash gap dash webinars. Uh, one more for you, Mario, here. Uh, what was, uh, in a match play format, my partner has a better score than me and I do not finish the hole. How is this scored? So for you, what you're going to do there is you're going to post uh, most likely score. Um, and I can actually uh, add to this on, on the website. We can add in the most likely score recommendations. I did not put them in here. I apologize. But there are recommendations based on how far you are away from the hole as to what you should uh, post for that score. So, you know, if you're within five feet or you're within five feet and 20 yards, or you're more than 20 yards away, there's a recommended number of strokes you add to your score based on that. And that's what you would do in that case. 
All right, perfect. So it looks like uh, we're through. Everyone, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you to Mario for taking the time out of his day to present to us and answer some questions. Um, any questions that you do have, please feel free to follow up with us individually. Um, all of our emails are listed on the website. And definitely be sure to check out our upcoming webinars. Um, all of those are also listed at the same webpage that the recordings are.